Hi, and welcome to a new episode of Being and Creating, a visual podcast on being with what is while creating the life that you really want. With me, as always, is the beautiful Lisa Wilson of beingbreath.com, and I am Kim Foreman of underthekimfluence.com. Today, we are talking about curveballs and how life just sometimes unexpectedly throws them at you <laughs> and sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad and uh how to kind of navigate that <laughs> yes yes <sighs> and the reason that we're talking about this today is that i had a major curveball thrown at me recently and i think i mentioned on one of the previous episodes on the comfort zone episode that i was shooting a wedding which i don't do <laughs> and that was um that was this uh like 3 days ago now i guess um and so the the mother of the bride is a friend of mine and she asked me to do the wedding and i said nope i don't do weddings i don't do them nope nope find somebody else <laughs> i'm not your girl <laughs> um, and so she was like okay 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 and then she came back and she really twisted the knife telling me like she wanted me to do her little girl's special day and nobody else would do because my photos were so beautiful and they really captured the essence of the person and you know, yada, yada, yada. Like you have to do this because now I've given you no choice. Right. There's no way to say no. Yeah. <laughs> because how can you say no to all of that? Like it was, it was, it was both at this. I mean, it, it was simultaneously super, super like, Oh my God, that's so sweet. And how dare you? <laughs> 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 fine fine so I was kind of like leading up to the wedding I was like oh my god I can't wait till this is over this is like so much stress like I you know what, what if the pictures don't turn out like blah 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 well I have to tell you that when the day arrived and I was in it like, I, oh, let me just back up and say, I have said for this entire time, I do not do weddings. I have zero interest in doing <laughs> weddings. No, 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 that's not me. Make it clear. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, like, but way before, like when I first started doing photography, I was like, no, I have no interest in doing weddings. Like, no, never. Mm -mm, that's not my thing. <laughs> well, as it turns out, when I got in it, I actually kind of loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I am opening myself up to uh, doing weddings. And honestly, like, that is like, as a photographer, that is where your largest earning potential comes from. Right, right. No doubt, like, hands down, unless mm -hmm. maybe if you're a, like, high-end fashion photographer with a, you know, with a well-known name, which I am not. <laughs> That's a whole <laughs> Um, but yeah, so had I, had I continued to turn away from the opportunity, I would not have ever known that I actually did really enjoy it. And who knows where it's going to lead. I mean, it, I'm super excited about it. Like now I'm thinking about like going out and buying wedding magazines and, you know, yeah. wedding blogs and, um, uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to do a styled shoot so that I can build up my wedding portfolio Love and, uh, get some practice and put myself under a gun of like, okay, I'm going to get these photos in 30 minutes, you know, of whatever section it is so that I have the practice of, operating under pressure yeah. um so anyway i like this whole new world has opened up to me that would not have existed had i just continually deflected the opportunity uh, i you know what i have this image in my head as you were talking right now and it's really kind of funny that you know the curveballs because i'm all about visual imagery but it's, you know, we stand in this, this safe box and we say, this is good and this is bad. This is a good throw. Those are bad. I'm not even going to worry about them, you know, and then the curveballs, the, the ones that come close, like I'm visualizing the ones you're almost going to hit. Oh, no, I, don't want, I don't want that one. I don't want that one. And I just I visualize you stepping out and being like, oh, 
fine, I guess I'll go do this one because you know, you, you made me, you know, and you got, you're like, wow, that was awesome. Like, you know, I hit it really far or it felt really good or that was so cool. And it just makes me, like I envision this whole field of people who are setting in this little, this little box and saying, this is a good one, this is a bad one, this is a good one, this is a bad one. But this box is just this imaginary line that's been drawn on the ground. And these like curveballs that are, that are out there, they're just, they're different opportunity in life. You know, life's set now, here's the picture going, here you go, here's a great one. And getting really confused why you're not going for it. <laughs> No, like, come on, come on, here's the fun. No, come on, you know, but I love this. this I, I love that image. It's and, so you know, I'm, it's, when, when you started talking about that, I was picturing the, all, all these balls coming at you, and you have a choice. Mm. You can either catch the ball or you can let it hit you in the head. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, and then if there's one way out here, like the wedding was for me, excuse me. Um, uh, you can choose to just let it go off into the, you know, off into the stands or whatever, or you can run and make that flying leap and be like, ah, oh, I snagged it. Yes. You know, like, like what you were talking about before we started recording this, the feeling, and I bring this up so everybody can like, like embody this too, but that feeling of how it was like completely, completely letting go of, of things. And I got this image of, you know, we talk about the whole cliff jumping thing about, oh, just, you know, you can do it, just you're really close, jump off this cliff. But when you're talking about going for that ball, it's, it's how I imagine that you felt when you finally said, okay, yes, I'm gonna do it. And it's that jumping out and being like, yes and that almost flight feeling that's terrifying and exhilarating at the same time right? yeah it was it was such an exhilarating feeling to i mean i was there for 11 hours and it honestly felt like i was there for three i i mean i was so dialed in to the entire process. I mean, it was, I mean, sh when I finally got in the car, when my husband picked me up, I was just like, wow. <laughs> but honestly, like up until that moment when I got in the car, I felt nothing. Like I was just, whew. you know what that makes me think of? And I'll bring this up here for anybody else who wants to reference it. Um, there is a very a classic author and a concept and a book that's been spun off of many times. And I'm going to butcher his name because I always do, but it's Mihai Chiksi Mihai, right? Because, yeah, I know, like, uh, it's, oh, it should, like, yeah. It's a, I used to know how to say his name and I forgot. I did too. Like I practiced it forever. And then I didn't say it for probably a couple of years. When I first got the book, I'm like, oh, I have to tell everybody about this. But don't worry, as usual, we will put the link beneath this. <laughs> It'll be there. But he's written, he's actually written a few since then. But his, the, first, uh, the first book that he wrote was titled Flow. And it's about this state of being that you get in when you are totally immersed in something that you are doing. And it is, you, that's, I brought it up because when you were talking about losing this sense of time, that is part of one of the concepts of being in flow is that you just, you completely lose all sense of time. So if anybody, you know, watching this has been doing something where you're like, you, you kind of, it feels like you're sleepwalking to the event in kind of a joyous way. And then you wake up and you're like, how in the world is it, you know, three o'clock? I had no idea that's kind of that state of flow where you're performing at your highest ability and you're just going and moving. And that, you know, that to me, you know, we talk about these curveballs. I think you have to jump out and take a few of those in order to find this state because staying in this box is quite often a recipe for sleepwalking. And that's a way yeah. different type of flow. That's a, that's a like solid, right. like, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I haven't read his books, but I am familiar with his, um, with his work. Uh -huh. 
And one of the things that I found super fascinating about his idea of flow is that it is not a state in which you are at ease. Yes. It is a state in which you are challenged. Yeah. And, uh, and you're, you're just like a little bit out of where you're comfortable, you know, yeah. just enough to where you, you're like on your toes. Yeah. And I found that super fascinating because I was like, wait, what flow is like supposed to be a bit like when I first heard about it, I was not about challenging myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy. It wasn't meant to be. <laughs> right. Right. Go through that life. Of, oh, yeah. Exactly. Like the, if the universe is throwing obstacles, like I just, you know, yeah. <laughs> I know I totally, yeah. And when you first hear that concept of flow, you're like, Oh, that sounds lovely. You know, I'm going to go. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> So yes, yeah, and, and I, oh God, I'm so glad that you brought that up. It's super, super uh, applicable to what I was feeling for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but you know, like not all of life, all of life's curveballs are immediately or or even ever just like oh yes yes. Sometimes it's like oh, <laughs> you know, like ugh. Um, right. There, there are those too, but um, my way of thinking is that you also have to catch those balls. Yes. Because again, you can either catch them or they can hit you in the head. And those are the ones that will really, really, really knock you out. Yes. Um, I, we've talked before in some of our conversations and I think of those type of people who go through life and you know I'm sure you know some and I definitely know some who go through life and it feels like they're always complaining because to them it feels like life is always pounding them no matter what they do and I think those are the type of people who are walking around like this or like this and they don't have their hands out and life is throwing those balls and they're like oh why is this so oh this is so hard like oh like this is so mean <laughs> and I think I love how you brought up that point about that those curveballs aren't always going to be those beautiful wedding experiences or those great things where you catch and you're like, yeah, you know, they're the ones that I can envision like you, you catch with your gut. It's not even with your hand, yeah. like, oh, you catch it, but you got it. Yeah, you know, like, you, like you have your hands held under your gut and you, you know, just like that, oh, you know, like the football player, you know? Like, yeah. Yes. And it might, it might knock you over. Like it gets thrown at you so hard, like you fall backwards, but you still caught it instead of letting it like, you know, give you whiplash. Yes. Yes. You were participating in the game. And I think that that is so crucial when we talk about these curveballs that you're, it's, it's all about this active engagement. It's not always going to feel good. It's not always going to look pretty, you know, and yeah, you're going to wind up on your, patootie sometimes. <laughs> I keep trying to keep this family friendly. One of these times we just need to put the warning on here and be like, <laughs> yeah, one of us cusses like a sailor and so you're going to hear some stuff. Or both of us. <laughs> That's okay, yeah. I was, <laughs> I was owning up to my own. I didn't want to call you out. But <laughs> um, yeah. So there's, um, there's this really beautiful uh, Zen tale that my husband really loves to share. Mm. And uh, it's about a farmer who has a horse that runs away and the neighbor comes up and he says, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to hear about your horse. That's terrible. And the farmer says, hmm, maybe good, maybe bad. Who's to say? And the horse comes back with 12 wild horses and the neighbor says, Oh wow, what beautiful fortune. Oh my goodness, like what a what a cause for celebration. And the farmer says, eh, maybe good, maybe bad, who's to say? The son is breaking the horses and he falls off and he breaks his leg. Mm -hmm. The neighbor says, Oh, I'm so sorry about your son. What a tragedy. The farmer says, Maybe good, maybe bad, who's to say? The next week the army comes along and wants to like pull out all able-bodied young men, but his son is saved because of his broken leg. And the story goes on. Mm. Love that one. 
I do too. I do too. It's so beautiful because there are gifts in the, in adversity. If, if you are willing to seek them out and to leverage them, they're, they're not going to just unfold. You, you have to actively unfold them. Yeah. I, in some sense, I, I so love that. I, I often think of that, you know, when, when life is like, you know, or you catch that curveball in the gut. And I think in some sense, life rewards you for participating. And I'm not saying that there's some, you know, great cosmic thing that's saying, oh, good job, you know, you get a trophy, that sort of thing but that we all want to experience life in this kind of deep and awakened and kind of, you know, joyful, happy way type thing. Mm -hmm. But there's also this depth of experience that you get when you, you go through something that's really hard or difficult or challenging and you come out the other side, or even as you're going through it, life feels richer and more, I guess, worth living in a sense. And I think that, that's kind of the reward I'm talking about that life, you know, rewards you for participating. It's that letting go of this is the good path and I'm going to follow this and this is the ball that I'm going to catch and letting go of that. This is what I'm going to avoid and going through and saying, I'm just going to participate. I'm going to stay awake to these people who are saying, you're going to photograph my daughter's wedding. Yes. <laughs> Staying awake to all of these little things that keep getting thrown and saying, okay, I'm taking it, this one, that, you know, take it, oh, this one, yeah, okay. And just participating. And that, I love that, you know, that I have this picture of the old, you know, the, the gentleman just standing there and, you know, he's like, eh, I'm going about my business, maybe good, maybe bad, but this is what it is. You know, I got my horses, got my son, it's, you know, yeah. Hey. We'll see. Huh? Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Like, you know, I my favorite quote ever, and I, I, you know, I needed to make an entire business out of this whole thing, but I mentioned it to everybody, and all of the time is the the Rumi quote, the field, the um, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing. There is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about language ideas even the phrase other each other doesn't make any sense and that that's you know i'll put that down there that is no, i've I'll never heard the the la the last two sentences of that mm -hmm. But yeah. I, I'd always heard the beginning of it, but never the second part. The, yeah, the language, that's, that's the part that like, you know, I think about too when I'm thinking about speaking about conversations and when you get to talking about good things and bad things and, you know, you have this passing conversation, oh, the weather's horrible today, isn't it, you know? Moving into that field where you're out there and experiencing life and language and ideas and the phrase each other the other person, it doesn't even make any sense because there is, there's not that separation. It is that good, it's bad, it's the horse returning, it's the wedding shooting, it's the not wedding shooting, it's all of this. It's just experience in this field. And I, I always, when I'm able to, you know, I don't always live in this place as it. I can trust me, ask my kids. Um, but when, I, when I'm able to, I love to like, just drop back into that field and be like, okay, you know? Here I am. I do want to add that I don't think that um, it's a good idea to do things that you are 100% certain that are not fit for you. Good. Um, like if you have shot weddings before, just to continue the example, and you know you cannot stand doing it, yeah, then, you know, maybe like don't you know, let, let that curveball pass you by. <laughs> I stop standing in front of the ball machine going, right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, step away from the ball machine. Um, you know, go, go stand in front of like the painting ball machine or whatever. <laughs> um, Gosh, yeah. But, um, good point. yeah, so, so I wanted to interject that. And then I also wanted to say that, um, 
looking for the good and the bad and the bad and the good are equally important. Mm. Everybody talks about looking for the, um, the good and the bad. And I, I, I will also add that I don't believe that whole, like, I, I don't believe it's helpful to tell people when something is going, when they're having a really bad time to say everything happens for a reason. That's a terrible thing to say to people. I, I agree with that. I agree. Um, but uh, everything, there, there can be a reason that is mined from everything. Like if you choose to dig into it, you can pull a reason out of it. Um, or if not a reason, at least, um, at least a gift. I love that. A gift, a direction. You know, that that makes me think of like, I, oh, I'm so, I'm so happy that you, you brought that up as a point. Um, this may be random and I may be like totally derailing us and then yeah, I'll it happens. Right back on, but you know. <laughs> When you're talking about, you know, finding meaning in things and, you know, the, the bad and the good, I think about things like, you know, the symbol of a hawk flying overhead, okay? You know, some people find it very profound and, oh my gosh, something just found, you know, and this means I have to go do this and so on and so forth. Some people see a hawk and they're like, hey, whatever, stupid bird, you know. Some people will see it and then go look up a message or like a horoscope, go find a message in there. And I think that it's not necessarily that those things in and of themselves have meaning or message. This, the curveball, the hawk, the horoscope, whatever it may be. Like I said, I don't believe in the, you know, the thing up here that's directing and saying, here you go, here's where you're supposed to go. But back to that concept of that we are always co-creating our lives, the universe, everything around that we're all participating in it. I think that when something like that happens and that message that is out there, the message that is, you know, that we mine out of it helps us find a direction that feels better to us, to our understanding, to our individual understanding. And I think that that can be invaluable when we practice that on like a daily basis. And we're looking for things that, that help us to understand the direction in which we're going. And if that means a hawk, that's great. If that means the curveball, if it means stepping out of the way of the curveball, if it's, you know, whatever the case may be, always finding those things that, that this embodied learning, not that, not that we should do this, you know, like the, oh, I need to be going this way. So I need to be looking for things that are going to help me go there. But the things that you know to be true inside, that's, where you were talking about, you know, that you like stepping outside of your comfort zone just, just a little bit, you know, and that this wedding was, whoa, out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah! You felt this sense of this is somewhere inside. You were like, this is where I want to go. Even though my path may be way over here, I need to go here to bump me off my path to get to this one. And so something was calling inside and you're like, okay, I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Okay. Um, so that actually, I, I, I want to come back around. Thank you for sharing all that. Cause yeah, I like finding meaning in, in things is different from there being meaning in things. Oh, yes. I like that. And, and I feel like it's super important for us to find the meaning. Mm. Um, yes. So along those same lines, sort of going back to looking at the um, good within the bad, it is equally important to look for the bad within the good um, because it is so easy to just get super excited about something and to go all gung ho and then to lose track of like everything else that you had going on before this thing happened. Like last night I realized that suddenly I was like, oh, I'm going to go out and buy wedding magazines. And then I'm going to do like this, like these huge styled shoots. I'm going to contact all these people and blah, 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 blah. Like just my mind was zinging with a bazillion things that I wanted to do with it that were seriously like a lot of time and energy. Yeah. Um, 
that I like right now my schedule is already full. <laughs> and so I just had to say like, okay, Kim, slow your roll. <laughs> yes. Oh just God. like slow down. This is not something that has to happen overnight. This could seriously pull you like right off track of what you're trying to do right now. Yes. So like continue it. Yes, absolutely. But schedule it. Like don't don't just like forget don't don't do your thing where you get all excited about something and then you pour like everything you have into that one thing. Exactly. Um just like schedule it out a little further. You know, you've got some time in November, you know, December, like yes and yes. don't integrate it into the life that you already have that you know that's a lesson that I've had to learn over and over because I am one of those like squirrel oh fun ah, you know and off I go and I have had to be reminded again and again through some of those balls totally hitting my head <clears throat> you know hello that this what is right now is as important as whatever this passionate thing may be out here. We talk about being and creating and that being aspect I think is something that is so easy to forget when we get excited about those ideas and I'm so like you. I get immersed in something and then I gotta go research it and I start planning all these ideas and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be the best thing ever. And then the kids get off the bus and I'm like, oh. And I think that I, you know, I, this is just my own practice, but I've had, I've had these moments where I've been so attached to this new thing, idea or whatever that I start resenting what is because it feels like it's standing in the way of what could be. <laughs> I have a feeling we're not alone in this either. So somebody watching this is going to be like, oh my God. But there's this like, I'm so glad you mentioned it, just this sense of, of integration of what is and what could be and what will be as you're going through your practice and acknowledging that you know you're talking bad and the good but the 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 destructive as well as the creative that you know there are things that will need to be destroyed in a sense and don't you know <laughs> i'm not thinking atomic bomb or anything but things that will need to be broken down and moved out of the way and dealt with in order to make room for these new things that are being created and I yeah. think that acknowledgement of, of that destructive and creative force working together, the whole yin yang thing is just as important. And I'm so, I just, I love, yeah, I love that you explored that topic. Cause that. Oh my gosh. How many times, how many times my husband has asked me to run to the store and I've been in the middle of something and I just stop and go like, <gasps> because I'm so into whatever it is that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And then I get in the car and I'm going down the road. And like, there's, as, as you go down our road, there's a space that opens up and you can see the mountains. I'm in Western North Carolina, so you can see the mountains. And then like the clouds are just wrapped around the mountains. Oh and and I, j I stop and I just think, why was I so reluctant to go out into the world today. Like if I had, if he had not asked me to go to the store, I would have been inside working on this all day with my head in the computer. Um, missed this beautiful, amazing mountain vista with the clouds, which is the, the misty days are some of my favorite days here because just oh, yeah. the, the smoky mountains are called so for a reason. They're just, yeah. it's just absolutely breathtaking. They're gorgeous. That just totally opened me up inside when I thought about that moment. Just that moment where you drive and you're like, okay. Um, and then I take a picture for him out and you know, like, yes. <laughs> and I show it to him when I get home. Look at the clouds. <laughs> yes, so beautiful. Oh my goodness. <sighs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Catch, try, try, just try maybe considering catching the curveballs, whether they seem enticing or not, and see what happens. Yes. I, yes. That's, <laughs> I mean, at least consider it. 
<laughs> right, right. You can look over there and, you know, stay in your comfort zone for a little bit. Stay here, but, you know, think about it because, you know, life emerges from it. I was going to say good things happen, but then I'm like, that negates yes. a bad conversation. It's like <laughs> life, life happens when you start going for the, the curveballs. That's, you know, you, you expand into it. I'm just, yeah, yeah. I think we, I, we've said enough. I'm, I'm starting to like, <laughs> I'm looking at my vision images now and that's when the words stop going and I just, and then, <laughs> I'm, just I'm in my happy roomy field right now. So. Maybe you could speak in pictograms. <laughs> I need to. That's what, I need to like, you know, sketch little things and be like, hmm, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, you can find me on underthekinfluence.com and you can find Lisa on beingbreath.com. Yeah. I hope you have a wonderful day and we will see you in two weeks. Yes, thank you.